Hi guys, Dane here, and welcome to my February book haul. Let's go. Okay, so I already filmed this bit and then lost the footage, so we're going to do this again. I got these two in the post yesterday. I guess we'll start with this one. This is Eating Animals by Jonathan Safran Foer, and uh, he is the author of Everything is Illuminated and Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close. I haven't read either of those, but um, I basically I wanted to pick this up because I'm writing a novel that's set on a factory farm, and uh, this book kept on coming up when I was looking into potential books that I could read as research for that. And so I thought I'd order it, but it's this beautiful little naked hardback. And I assume, like, it, I don't think it ever came with a dust jacket, but uh, it's lovely, lovely that. And then the other thing that I got was On Writing by Stephen King. So I specifically ordered this because somehow I've never read this. Like, I'm a big Stephen King fan, and I'm a writer, and I've never read on writing. So I really need to sort of get this into my system, because I, I know how influential it is for, you know, people who are into writing as well. So I just need to make this happen. So those are the two that I did yesterday. I've also got this little stack here. Oh, it's Katie Lewington's book. It's Hotel Life. Oh, that's super cool. So this is a poetry collection by a poet friend of mine. Oh, this is cool. It's like a chat book as well. It comes from CWP Collective Press. And um, yeah, I'm holding number 16 of 100. It's really pretty. Look, it's got like little bits of blue in it. And so um, yeah, check out Katie Lewington, actually. I really like her poetry. It's really cool. And um, she's a nice girl as well. So, and also this is signed. She signed this for me, which is cool because I'm actually currently doing a video on my signed book collection so I can now add this one thank you very much Katie I know what this is I saw I glimpsed this and this is uh, 1 plus 1 equals 3 by Dave Trott a masterclass in creative thinking Dave Trott is a art director basically and uh, or a former art director I believe written in Dave Trott's distinctive almost zen like style 1 plus 1 equals 3 is a collection of provocative anecdotes and thought experiments designed to light a fire under your own creative ambitions so I've read one of his other books as well and I can't for the life of me think what it is right now but the way he writes is like it's almost like a poem I would say so let me just read part of this story, and there's always a moral at the end. At a school in the USA, the girls in their early teens had just discovered lipstick. They would go into the female toilets to apply it. Then, giggling, they'd leave imprints of their lips on the large mirror. This made a lot of extra work for the cleaning staff. The head teacher asked the girls to stop. Of course, they ignored her. So she took the girls to the toilets for a demonstration. She said, it takes a lot of work to clean the lipstick off the mirror. She said to the janitor, please show the girls how much work it takes. The janitor put the mop in the toilet, squeezed off the excess water and washed the mirror, then put the mop in the toilet again and repeated the process. From that day on, there was no more lipstick on the mirror. Ah! It's some Charles Bukowski. It's a collection of Charles Bukowski poetry. Sifting through the madness for the word, the line, the way. I just love his titles. And his books, they're just so aesthetically pleasing. I just can't even... What is this? I'm going to get it out. Let's go. Yeah. This is Lucy Crookshanks, the trader of Saigon. So Lucy is uh, Lucy from... B B <laughs> yeah. No, Lucy is Lucy from Bookaxe. And she does Bookaxe here on Booktube. It was shortlisted for The Guardian, not the Booker Prize. And uh, it's got a character in it called Fuck. I mean, it is set in Vietnam, so that's that's why. So yes, the trader of Saigon. Lovely job. Okay, we just had a minor cock up in which the camera stopped working. But uh, I've just opened this, which is Ursula K. Le Guin, The Left Hand of Darkness. So obviously, uh, Ursula K. Le Guin passed away recently. And I felt kind of bad because I've never read any of her work, despite pretty much being surrounded by it. I know my dad used to read a lot of it when I was a kid. So I thought I would check out one of her books. And The Left Hand of Darkness was recommended to me. So I thought I would look online for it. Now... This is interesting because I didn't request this, but it looks pretty cool. So this is a hardback. It's called Divided, Why We're Living in an Age of Walls by Tim Marshall. Uh, we feel more divided than ever. This riveting analysis tells you why. So this has just been sent to me by Elliot and Thompson, are the publishers. It comes out on 8th of March 2018. And yeah, it actually looks really cool. I'm quite excited about reading this. Okay, 
Now we have a crap ton of books because I went to this bookshop near me. It's a second-hand bookshop and it's called uh, the Cottage Bookshop in Penn, which is in Buckinghamshire. And uh, yeah, a lot of the books were, I mean, it was maybe £2, £3 for a book. So it's not as cheap as necessarily going to a charity shop or something like that. But obviously they are you know, a business. They've been there since the 1950s, just constantly been a, a second-hand bookshop, which I think is really cool. So, um, so I spent a fair amount of money <laughs> buying books because these all look good and I want to read them all. So, in no particular order, we have Meet My Folks by Ted Hughes, and this is one of the little Faber and Faber books. I actually have a similar Faber and Faber copy of, um, what is it? It might even be Sylvia Plath. I've got Benjamin in this cop in this this ish edition as well and it's just really pretty and so I thought I'd check it out especially because I was talking to uh, Miriam from Between Lines and Life and um, basically she was talking about Ted Hughes and she really likes Ted Hughes and I've never read him because because I used to read Sylvia Plath and back in the day I used to think you had to read either Hughes or Plath so I picked Plath but I figure it's about time I gave Hughes a chance this is a lovely little copy of Silas Marner by George Eliot and it's like one of these proper old hardbacks so it's really pretty Silas Marner. And my friend Dave has written a musical based on Silas Marner, and I've never read it, so I thought it was about time I finally checked it out. We have some Asimov, so this is Isaac Asimov, The Martian Way, and it's just one of these old uh, sci fi, panther science fiction books. And I'm, I, I, I want to read more Asimov, so I've got a few of his books, and I'm pretty much just grabbing them where I can. I got Francis Hodgson Burnett, The Secret Garden. We actually read and studied this at secondary school and I completely forgot about it until I heard someone on booktube talking about it. And so that made me think I need to get it to add back into my collection because I try and collect a copy of all of the books that I've read. I actually also impatiently got this, which is Ursula K. Le Guin, A Fisherman of the Inland Sea. And this is just a really nice hardback again. And um, you know, I just thought, I, I knew I already had one on its way to me, but I wanted to get another one because I know I'm going to like Ursula K. Le Guin. And actually, even if I don't like one of her books, now I have two so I can read the other one. And if I don't like them both, then we know. Interview with a Vampire by Anne Rice. I've never read any Anne Rice. I know she's kind of the queen of vampires. And I've heard, I think I've even seen the film based on this, but I don't remember it enough for it to ruin it. So I'm going to read this and see what I think. Then we got this really odd one. Born That Way by Eric R. Carlson, M.D. Forward by His Grace the Archbishop of Canterbury. I just bought this on a whim, really. It's a first edition. Forward by the Archbishop of Canterbury. It's just odd. I mean, I don't know if I'll ever read this, so I may well unhaul this in about six months' time, but... Okay, then we have A Pip and Flink's Adventure, Running from the Deity, which is by Alan, D uh, which is by Alan Dean Foster. And literally the reason I got this is because I read Midworld by Alan Dean Foster, and it was enjoyable. So I thought, big old second-hand bookshop, they have to have some Alan Dean Foster in here, and they did. We have a couple of Douglas Adams books, so I got The Long Dark Tea Time of the Soul and Dirk Gently's Holistic Detective Agency. So I've read the Hitchhiker series, but I haven't read any more of Adams' work, and I want to. So I'm going to. Code Breakers, edited by F.H. Hinsley and Alan Strip, and this is the inside story of Bletchley Park. I mean, I'm a computer geek, and the stuff that was going on in Bletchley Park during the Second World War and the breaking of the Enigma and all of Alan Turing's role and all that kind of stuff is basically the foundation of modern computing so I find it all fascinating especially because I find the Second World War fascinating so I thought this would be a nice little book to read on the subject and then I got End of Watch by Stephen King so I believe this is the third book in the Bill Hodges trilogy and I've already read Mr Mercedes and I got Finders Keepers in my January haul so when I saw this and realised it was the third one you know I really, I'm really looking forward to it as well because I read Mr. Mercedes about a year ago and really enjoyed it. And it's only recently that I've got the books to crack on with it. I'm actually currently reading on writing, so. Okay, then we have The History Boys, which is a play by Alan Bennett. You might have noticed from some of my recent videos, I've been, I guess, getting into Bennett. I've only read two of his books and both of them were short. I haven't read one of his plays and I know him or know of him predominantly as a playwright. So this should be interesting. And that was the winner of the Tony Award for Best Play. Then we have National Geographic, Volume 175, Number 6. And specifically the reason I got this is because it's from June 1989, which is the month I was born in. So this is as old as me. <laughs> Alright, some Agatha Christie. I got 
Peril at End House, because it's one of the best known ones of hers that I haven't read. I somehow I haven't just haven't picked up a copy of it yet. And then I've got a couple of more obscure ones, purely really because these are in these old, I mean one's published by Pam, one's by Fortuna, but they're these really old copies, they're lovely. So I got uh, Murder in the Muse and Destination Unknown. Lovely. I love books like these. Beautiful. Then I got The Tomb and Other Tales by H.P. Lovecraft. I've never read any Lovecraft, so I thought it was about time that I corrected it. And this has a very creepy cover, as you can see. I mean, yeah. Shall I do the rest of the video like this? Thomas Harris, Black Sunday. So Thomas Harris is the author of the Hannibal Lecter books. And I've never heard of this book. I didn't know that this even existed. Paolo Coelho, I think I said that right, The Alchemist, it's just one of those really kind of influential and important books that I've never read, and uh, it's not too long as well, so definitely. Then we got some Bill Bryson, because I've been slowly collecting his work, even though I think I've only read one of his books, but I liked it so much, I just know I'm going to like the rest of it. So I got Neither Here Nor There, which is Travels in Europe. I got Made in America. Down Under, which is obviously Australia. And then and then I've got Bill Bryson's African Diary as well, which is a little hardback. Cool. Three books left to go. I got Arthur Conan Doyle, The Tragedy of the Carrasco. So Arthur Conan Doyle is the author of the Sherlock Holmes books. I've read all of those and I have read some of his other non-Sherlocky stuff as well. And I just kind of, I'm, I'm slowly going through it really. The cool thing about most of that work is that, well all of it I suppose, is that it's no longer under copyright so any publisher can pretty much publish their own editions and too few of them actually do. So it was nice to finally, you know, to finally see a, a non-Holmes Arthur Conan Doyle knocking around. And these last two books, they're by Peter James, and the only reason I only got these two and not more was because there was no phone signal so I couldn't check my Goodreads. So a lot of Peter James's books are like looking good dead or not dead enough or whatever. And because they all have dead in the title, I never remember which ones I've read. However, these do not have dead in the title, so I got Faith and Sweetheart. So yeah, that's what I got from the Cottage Bookshop in Penn. On, over to you, future Dane. I'm just chilling in my dressing gown today because I only have this one thing. So, uh... In fact, it's from Music Magpie as well, so God knows what it is. Maybe it's not even a book. Ah, okay. So it is Stay Out of the Basement by R.L. Stein, And I had to get this because recently I did my uh, Goosebumps tour. And I can't remember who. Somebody commented on it saying, uh, like, what? No, Stay Out of the Basement. And I realised I have read this. I just don't own it for some reason. So I had to buy it to rectify that because I like to keep all of the books that I own. So, yeah. Very shiny. Alright, just a quick cheeky thing here. This feels like a hardback. Oh, so exciting. This is Essie Hinton, The Outsiders. So, um, well, there's a story behind this. Basically, I, I created a Wikipedia page for something called The Outsiders House Museum, which basically, if you've read The Outsiders, you know a big chunk of it is set in this one particular house where they're kind of, it's their kind of safe house. And the film that was shot at this particular house that was used, um, basically the house after that fell into disrepair and it was purchased by a guy called Danny Boy O'Connor, who was in House of Pain. And he's turning it into a museum. It's really random. It's quite a short book, actually. I'm excited about this. Thon. So, Time Hopathon runs from yesterday, oops, from yesterday, which was Monday the 19th of February to Sunday the 25th of February. And I've done a TBR for it already, so I'll link to that below if you want to see that. But you could just watch this video and see what happened. So, it's currently 8.45 p.m. on uh, Tuesday the 20th of February. I didn't... So, this is Truman Capote, Summer's Crossing. And I've never read it, or heard of it for that matter, but I have read Breakfast at Tiffany's, so I thought, why the hell not? Okay, then I got Margaret Atwood, The Handmaid's Tale. Somehow I haven't got around to reading this yet, but obviously everyone's kind of rave raging about it because of, I think it's HBO that did the series, isn't it? I don't know. But anyway, there's a, a TV series of it now. I haven't seen that either, and I do kind of want to see it, but I want to read the book first. Then we have Kurt Vonnegut, Cat's Cradle, and this is a pretty cool cover of that. So I've read some Vonnegut before, and Cat's Cradle is probably arguably his most well-known one, and I haven't read it, so I saw it and I was like, better get it. Brett Easton Ellis, American Psycho, is one, that, again, that a lot of people really love. So it's, oh yeah, Patrick Bateman, because I always think it's, he, he, I always used to get Patrick Bateman and Norman Bates confused, because Norman Bates is, a, is in Psycho, and Patrick Bateman is in American Psycho. And we got some non-fiction, so this is Roberto Escobar, 
Escobar. Drugs, guns, money, power. Murderer. Yeah. Oh, I could have just looked at it. Yeah. Yeah. Drug dealer, politician, devil, saint. I just find Pablo Escobar fascinating, and there's a lot of like Netflix documentaries. We've watched a few, haven't we? Yeah, recently. And, uh, and like Narcos is great as well. Yeah. So I thought I'd pick that up, especially because it's written by his brother. And then we got Nick Cave and the Ass Saw the Angel. You're supposed like to be showing it to them, not looking no, at the cover yourself. No, I was yourself. looking at it. No, it I looks c- good. I like the cover. Yeah, well, Nick Cave is uh, of the Bad Seeds. He's a musician. I like his music. All right. Um, yes, I have some haul bits. Sorry, Biggie. Biggie's down here. He wants to see what's in the boxes. I think this is for me, but it's addressed to my girlfriend. But I'm just going to open it, and we'll just hope that it is. It's a book. It's definitely for me. I did, I did get her to order something for me on Amazon Prime, so that'll be why. And this is... Robert Michaels, The Demon in the Trees by Ben Sanders. So you might have seen Ben here on uh, BookTube. Basically, I picked this up for what Todd and I are doing with our indie read-alongs. I thought this would be a good one to, uh, to, to indie read-along because people watch Ben's channel. And so it's always nice. We want to try and support more BookTubers who are also uh, authortubers and, and have books out. So, so there's Ben. So yeah, Demon in the Trees. I'm looking forward to this. By the way, I would read you the blurb for... In uh, Demon in the Trees, but it's long, and I would uh, summarise it, but I didn't actually check what it's about. I, I don't mind too much. Quite happy to go into things blind. Oh, and here we go. This is Angie Thomas, The Hate You Give. I finally got a copy of The Hate You Give, so I, I, I've left it a little bit late, to be honest. But I will. I hope I didn't just. I, I just read the ending lines by accident. I was trying to figure out how many pages it was, but I don't think it spoiled it. I think I just saw the KKK mentioned. I'll stop flicking now. But anyway, it's like, what, 430 odd pages. So it's just a good old book, actually. It's longer than I thought it was. So this is, oh yes, it is Charles Bukowski, The Rooming House Madrigals. Early selected poems, 1946 to 1966. And these books, they're just so aesthetically pleasing. So this, oh, this is one that I've been sent a copy of and I've been excited to talk about this one on my channel. So this is Please Hear What I'm Not Saying, a poetry collection for Mind, which is a mental health charity. This is compiled and edited by Isabel Kenyon. And basically, Isabel reached out to me and asked if I'd be interested in reading it. I must say, it looks quite... I like the layout. Look, it's got the titles at the bottom, which is quite interesting. So the poems are, like, you know, front and centre, and then the titles are at the bottom. But this is a cool idea. really like this. Contents. The reader of this book must name the sections themselves. Which is really cool, it makes it kind of interactive. Yeah, this as well is in support of Mind, so if you buy a copy, the proceeds go to charity, this mental health charity. I believe all of the poems in here are about mental health and by, you know, authors with some sort of mental health representation. And I've actually expressed some interest in um, being in the next collection if she does another witch. Which she said I think she wants to as well, so hopefully this does well. I'm going to read and give this a proper review uh, with a video of its own, so keep your eyes peeled for that. Alright, I've got a book, and it's a hardback, I can tell. Oh, it might be my Asimov. No, it's not, it's Steve Wozniak with Gina Smith. I was. How I invented the personal computer, co-founded Apple, and had fun doing it. So, a little bit non-fiction. I thought that'd be interesting. This came from Blackwell's in Oxford. (laughs) Yeah. Which we didn't go to, did we? No. And then everyone was like, why don't you go to Blackwell's? And I was like, because the book's too expensive. And then I ordered this, I guess. I don't know. Or maybe they sent it. No, I did. I bought this. This is Gristle from Factory Farms to Food Safety. Thinking twice about the meat we eat. Edited by Moby with Mayon Park. So there we go. And the point of this is so that I can read this as a research for Meat, my factory farming novel. Actually, that's it because it's the 28th of February today. So that's it for my February haul. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a comment below letting me know which of these books take your fancy, if any of them. And I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.